I chose a case because I think sometimes with, this is not exotic. It's not uh, something crazy, maybe, but it's, uh, for me, uh, posed a, an interesting uh, problem in the operating room. So this is an 80-year-old man who had been seen in the uh, emergency uh, department a month before I met him. And uh, basically, he had just severe right upper quadrant abdominal pain. And um, at the time, they did some blood work and um, a sonogram. About maybe a month after that, I was, he was referred to me from his uh, medical doctor, and he had called me multiple times on the phone in a, in a maybe a five-day period. And finally, I said, okay, come to the hospital, and we'll uh, look at you. This is, a, I'm sorry, the, this image, it, I could only grab one image of the original um, ultrasound when he was seen a month prior to the admission, and uh, this is what uh, they had shown. And I think maybe uh, we'll come back to this a little bit, or just uh, if you look at the image, it, it seems almost um, uh, unusual, not, not unusual. They had cholecystitis, distended gallbladder, et cetera, et cetera. When I saw him, we repeated the, I have a video. How do I do the video? How do I start the video? Okay, so this is the ultrasound that we did when he was admitted after I had met him. And again, maybe it doesn't seem um, uh, that different or that unusual. Maybe this is just a, a, an old man with just a, a plain old cholecystitis. What is interesting though, on this ultrasound, the stone that you saw before now was gone. And I just want to say um, that even though this might not be that exotic of a case, I want us to remember that we do still do biliary surgery. We still see gallbladders, at least in my practice. And we have to remember that all of uh, this surgery really began and should continue. And we should be the ones taking care of the bigger problems when it comes to uh, biliary surgery. Um, can you start that one for me too? This is a CT scan on the same admission as this last ultrasound. And I'm gonna go to the other view. And now I go to the compagnon question. Does anybody have any comments? What to do next? Severe abdominal pain. And you saw all the images that uh, we did when he came in the hospital the second time. Does anybody have an idea of a diagnosis or? This one, could you repeat that uh, CT scan again? That's correct. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's correct, and it's it's a fist. It, there's a there's aerob pneumobilia. Yeah, and what's interesting about this case? No, pneumocolysis, pneumocolysis, pneumocolysis. Yeah, yeah, because the gallbladder is is blocked, and uh, so it's. Exactly, exactly, and huh? It's contact in contact with the colon. Any other suggestions? I put that all in. 
Do you have an upper, upper GI endoscopy? No. I think good question. That's a good question too, which I didn't think of at the time, but any, any other ideas of what it could be? You ruled out the colon because we didn't see that. So is there a tumor in the gallbladder? That's another question. <laughs> do an MRI? We didn't do an MR. I would operate on this patient now. Uh, the air is inside gallbladder or in the wall of the gallbladder? Say again. The, the air is in, in, in. inside, not in the wall of the gallbladder. No, no. It, maybe you want to play that, that one again. The CT scan. And we kind of picked this up, but it, it took a long time to look at the scans. But mm -hmm. any idea? And before I move to the next slide, I'll tell you any idea what the diagnosis is. I would huh? be concerned with it. That's right, and it's kind of unusual. Um, at least in my experience, let me get to the next slide. So the, the, the interesting then, so we take them to the operating room. We did frozen sections because we did a laparoscopy. It was a very hard mass and it was almost, you know, circular. Everything comes back negative. For me, the operation, I think uh, uh, I converted to open. And now the question is, what do you do? It's a fistula in the body of the gallbladder, not the fundus, not near the bile duct, near the cystic duct. It's actually in the body of the gallbladder. And the mass surrounding it was approximately, I would say about uh, maybe five, six centimeters. And it was completely stuck to the porta hepatis. Frozen sections all came back negative. Question is, what operation do you do? Does anybody have a suggestion? Uh, that's, Rashad, that, Rashad that's a, wants that, to say something. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I mean, and the picture that you have air in the wall of the gallbladder suggests very much you've got an emphysematous cholecystitis. Uh, uh, what you try to do is try to dissect it, but if it's very difficult, you may only do a cholecystostomy and then drain it until it settles, and then you can go back at the second stage when uh, all the inflammatory response settles and do the complete cholecystectomy. That's my suggestion. That's what I will do in a situation like that. Does any, that's, thank you, and I think that's an option. Does anybody have an idea of what you can do technically to take care of this all at one time? And mind you, the fistula between the duodenum and the gallbladder was, was about maybe four or five centimeters. Ultimately, I could stick my whole thumb up to here into the fistula. So it was very large. Any suggestions? What, what, there's a, there's a, there is an operation that I think we forget, you know, when you see a lot of duodenal fistulas. You can, and you can plug a, 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 bar, a loop of bowel on it. Say again? You, you, the problem now is to close the fistula on the duodenum. You can patch a loop of bowel on it. Most of the descriptions, first of all, this is pretty rare to, uh, in terms of the main body of the gallbladder. And most of the descriptions are do the cholecystectomy and close the fistula. This was way too big to do that. So there is an operation, and I'll go to that for shortness of time. It's called duodenal diverticulization or duodenal exclusion. And what I did was I excised the second portion of the duodenum with the gallbladder on block, dissected it off the bile duct. The, the bile duct was not involved, but it was severely inflamed. And he had a, a cystic duct that was really almost the size of a, a lead pencil, very, very small. Excuse me? Yes, or diverticulization. And you, you, this is an operation that people, we've done, I've done maybe a dozen and a half of these for duodenal fistulas. You basically, the, the when question, there's a fistula, the, yeah, go on. The question is the ampulla. Because you want, you want to make sure that you don't go beyond the ampulla. And if then the, you have an ampulla open in the, in the abdomen. 
This is truly in the second portion of Duodenum, true. And if you look at my drawing, yeah. it goes down. So that would have been- How an, did you know? Uh-huh. How did you know? What I did was I, I opened the Duodenum to look. Mm -hmm. I had to at that point because I opened it and the worst that could happen, I close it and go home. Yeah. So uh, when I saw that, I uh, proceeded to do the diverticulization. Now, mind you, the etiology of these also, when you see it in the duodenum second portion, it's usually a stone disease. When you see it in the post-pyloric space, it's usually ulcer disease. They're, they're very rare, but I, I really want us to remind us about this operation that we can apply to things with the, the bile duct with, in terms of the, um, the duodenum. This is the specimen. What you see in front of you is the actual hole. That's the duodenum uh, dissected. And the hole was really, I could stick my, you know, almost my whole thumb into the um, specimen. You see it's in the body of the gallbladder. The duodenum is resected. And this is the space. Thank you. Valerio. Thank you, Joseph. Uh... Uh, we, uh, just uh, to uh, um, signal that we have now quite aggressive endoscopists and we, re we receive uh, since a, a little time patients with treatment of cholecystitis, acute cholecystitis with transduodenal drainages. They put big stents, big metallic stents between the duodenum and uh, the gallbladder in so-called inoperable patients. Uh, and so we receive those patients afterwards and we have the same kind of problems. Uh, so it's a good, uh, good suggestion. And, and also, let me comment on something. Number one, we are hepatobiliary surgeons. I, I always like to come to this meeting to remind us who we are. These are beautiful, exotic cases, but we still need to be the champions to take care of these problems that a lot of general surgeons, radiologists, gastroenterologists think they can take care of. And then we end up, like you said, with problems that are much more uh, difficult than the initial difficult problem. Gina? So, at the time before laparoscopy, at the time of the era of open cholecystectomy, these patients we used to wait before touching them because once you get rid after four to five weeks of the inflammation, you treat them with antibiotics, then you will do a simple open cholecystectomy without touching the duodenum. I don't agree with that, by the way. And that was a teaching that I had in residency, but it, it, it's 20% of patients with acute cholecystitis that go home without, with their gallbladder mm -hmm. have a, a recurrence of cholecystitis. So I, I am yeah. absolutely 100% in the belief that if you have a cholecystitis, no matter how difficult it is, the patient cannot go home with the gallbladder. It has to be tied to the door on the way out. I think I want to go uh, that's quite proven in the literature now. There is ample literature on that. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think we need to move Thank on. Thank you.